The world is turning electric at a rapid pace. Electric transportation is revolutionizing mobility in a way we've never seen before. This change includes almost every sector, from vehicles to heavy machinery, mining, forestry and maritime. Batteries have a significant role in this change. Finland is a leading country in the European lithium battery industry. We are globally known for our low carbon solutions in energy and mobility. We are also rich in resources. Finland is a significant European producer of raw materials for electric vehicle batteries. Finnish companies are famous for innovativity and their ability to make sustainable business for the future. Finland's unique offering in the battery industry includes the whole value chain, supported by innovative technologies and services. Finland has a leading role in battery recycling research in the EU. Bat Circle, a consortium led by Aalto University, brings together companies, universities, research centers and cities. Its mission is to improve manufacturing processes and battery recycling. So, why Finland? Finland leads the way in the European battery industry. We create innovations that are safe, traceable and sustainable. Finland has the resources, the innovations and the know-how to become a real battery superpower. We believe in world-changing ideas and turning them into global success stories. Finland works for us. Now let it work for you. Business Finland. World Ideas. Hello everyone and welcome to our live stream. Batteries from Finland, creating the low carbon future through batteries and electrification. Thank you so much for taking time uh, out of your day today to join us. We're joined by representatives from five different companies and organizations and over 40 journalists have joined us from uh, across Europe and Asia. My name is Hetta Huittinen and I head up international PR and media for Business Finland. Business Finland is hosting our session today. This actually might be one of the uh, last live streams we'll be doing for a while for, uh, for international media. We're hoping that with the COVID situation improving that uh, after the summer we might actually be able to invite you on the ground to Finland to discover our expertise and our companies. But today we're still here in the studio and we'll be talking about batteries and electrification with our companies who are with us here today. Now I'll take you through a couple of practicalities before we get started. First of all, uh, you, have, uh, you should be able to see the agenda at the bottom of your screen throughout the event and we've also sent it to you in advance. Please also note that this live stream will be recorded so that those who can make it today can watch it later. And also we'll be sharing the link to the recording with you as well so you can watch it afterwards if you so wish. Um, at the beginning of each segment, we'll watch a intro video about the company that we uh, are talking to. And then after that, I will uh, invite a representative of that company to join me. And I'll ask a couple of questions to get us started. And at that point, I would also invite you to start typing in your questions into the chat. And I will picking, I'll be picking those up and asking those from our experts. In addition, we'll also have a quick poll at the start of our event uh, to get your thoughts on electrification. But now, before I join our first guests uh, for today, we are very honoured to share with you a video greeting from Finland's Minister for Economic Affairs, Mr. Mika Lintila. Dear members of the international press, I'm very happy to welcome you to this, to this uh, international press event. Climate change is one of the, our shared great challenges. Finland has chosen to respond ambitiously and the government has committed to reach carbon neutrality by 2035. We have also recognized uh, the role of electrification and batteries to reduce CO2 emissions. Among the first countries in the world, we just launched Finland's national battery strategy. It outlines how Finland can contribute to the common EU effort to build a sustainable, innovative and competitive battery industry in Europe. 
Fila not only has all the key minerals for batteries, but also outstanding competence in research and production. Finland is uh, therefore ready to play a significant role in building the complete value chain for batteries. We are eager to build dialogue with other countries on halving transport emission by 2030 and in, co in connection to this goal on developing a sustainable battery industry. Responsible operations, traceability, safety and carbon neutrality are guiding principles for the Finnish battery sector, from minerals to recycling. I also invite international experts and businesses to take a look at the opportunities Finland and our quickly evolving battery cluster offer. We warmly welcome partners to innovate and create sustainable economic growth together. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Lintila, for that uh, overview. And now for the first part of our programme from the studio on why Finland is uniquely placed to build the battery value chain and lead battery research in the EU. To dis uh, discuss this topic with me, uh, please let me introduce Mari Lundström. Uh, she is the professor at uh, the School of Chemical Engineering at Aalto University, and Ilkka Homanen, uh, who is the head of Smart Mobility and Batteries from Finland programme at Business Finland. Maria Nilka, good morning. How are you doing? <laughs> good, morning. good morning. Thank you good for great. invitation. <laughs> Excellent. Great to have you both here. Um, I have a couple of questions for both of you, and sure. then I would also invite our journalist to start typing in your questions now so we can ask those from uh, Ilka and Mari. But uh, Ilka, we just saw the greeting from Minister Lindila where he talks about our national battery strategy. Um, how can international companies benefit from this national strategy? What opportunities does it bring and what does it uh, bring in terms of opportunities for international talent? Okay, uh, thanks Hetta for the question. Uh, I think our minister put it already pretty nicely, uh, starting from the fact that this is a national strategy. But uh, from my perspective, I could say that uh, the collaboration with the markets is kind of built in. So Finnish market is, is pretty small, so we are really keen on, uh, let's say, openly with an open mind to collaborate with the markets. Uh, this can take various forms. Uh, it can take a uh, research form. <laughs> we hope to get uh, more investments to Finland as well with, uh, with, with the help of international companies. Uh, we are also looking for commercial partnerships, quite, quite uh, let's say, naturally. And uh, last but not least, uh, Finland can be considered being a battery hotspot and, and that should attract uh, foreign talent as well to Finland. Excellent, thank you. Um, Mari, Finland covers the entire battery value chain from uh, primary production of materials all the way to secondary processes where the min minerals are recycled from the batteries. Uh, Finland has also been appointed uh, to coordinate EU research on recycling uh, of batteries. Can you tell us a little bit about the recent developments in this research and how does sustainability factor into it? Well, of course, one of the most important elements in focus is lithium now. Lithium has not been earlier recovered in recycling and now it will be required by the uh, European Battery Directive. So that is very close and, and many companies are developing lithium recovery. But then in the longer term, also recovery of aluminium, graphite, fluorides, electrolyte, unrecovered elements of the batteries. That will be an important part also in its recovery, in its recovery from the remaining uh, energy uh, dismantling uh, and CO2 low operation in recycling. Excellent. And we'll be hearing a little bit more about recycling from one of our companies today as well uh, uh, in a later segment. Uh, I see that there's actually a question already for uh, Ilka from uh, Yunmi Bay from the Byline Network in Korea. 
Um, Ilka, how do you expect Finland's battery industry promotion policy to affect the global eco-friendly policy and global battery industry? Okay, uh, that's a good question also. Uh, Finland is uh, pretty much, let's say, focusing at the moment towards Europe. So build, building a sustainable value chain for Europe. That doesn't mean that we do not, let's say, collaborate and, and help other markets uh, to go towards a sustainable future. So we, we are kind of openly looking at all the markets where we can, let's say, uh, support the development for, for sustainable future. Excellent. And there's a question, for Mari, for you as well from uh, Yunmi Bai. Um, as a le uh, leading European battery recycling research country, is there any policy or direction that you would like to propose to other countries, including maybe the United States or Asia? I would emphasize the evaluation of uh, uh, life cycle evaluation and environmental impacts in the early state of recycling process development. So not only to fo focus on like very high recovery of elements, but at the same time evaluating each unit process and they environmental impact, if they truly are more feasible for environment than the existing or competing options. This way we can develop the best recycling technology for the whole globe. Excellent. Um, Ilka, maybe a question for you. Um, sure. we, uh, we've talked about, uh, or, or already touched upon actually, how uh, Finland has a very active battery cluster. Um, and we're meeting some of the big players uh, here today. But could you uh, maybe talk a little bit about the smaller companies that also play an ir uh, important role and what they offer internationally? Sure. Uh, I would like to open this topic by saying that Finland is, is uh, let's say, an open society, open innovation, public-private partnership are very, very actively utilized in Finland. And that means also in the battery business uh, such things as ecosystem type of development, where big companies, small and medium size uh, startup companies, they all work together towards, uh, let's say, the future solutions, future business models. And uh, almost all these big, uh, big players, they have their, let's say, uh, grassroots startups uh, developing the innovations for, for to be utilized uh, along with uh, with the whole whole battery solutions or systems. Yeah. Uh Mari, um, with the, excel uh, the accelerating electrification of our entire society, batteries will obviously be playing an increasingly important role. Um, how do we sure ensure that this electrification happens sustainably? I think one key factor is traceability. So in order to trace where the raw materials come from, what is their CO2 footprint in production, in their refining, in, in battery production, and also uh, tagging and identifying that will also help later on in sorting and, and, and automatization of the battery uh, dismantling and, and separation and, and further re recycling. So I think there is, is a lot we can do to know what our battery actually contains and what is in its uh, sustainability factor kind of. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, we are getting questions in now from, uh, from our journalists. Uh, Ilka, this is for you from Alex Scott from C and N E magazine. Do the small scale activities in Finland mean the sector is always going to be at a disadvantage when it comes to economies of scale and relevance, or do you envisage ongoing growth over time? Well, uh, my answer is that Finland is also known uh, of its, uh, let's say, kind of a small country, but we are we are always, let's say, bigger than the size of the country. Mm. So we are, we are currently about 100 company stakeholders working together towards Europe, towards the markets. Uh, so there's, there's plenty of scalability available from Finland and also, of course, uh, along with our international partners in the future. Um, and uh, we have a question now from uh, Michael uh, Reichenbach. Uh, this is for both of you, but I'll ask you first, Mari. Um, why the focus on, uh, on small Finland alone? Will there be Scandinavian cooperation with, for example, Sweden's uh, Northvolt, which is already much further along than the Finns? Yeah, I would absolutely say not Finland alone. Finland together with, with uh, European and global, global players. Our strengths are, for example, in excellent uh, uh, raw materials, in excellent metallurgical know-how, refining, production. And, and together, of course, we operate together with and, and, and collaborate together with, with Northvolt, with, with Norwegian companies. But uh, uh, to bring our strengths 
into this co uh, collaboration. And I think this is something we want also here to discuss today about. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Ilka, would you like to add something yeah, to that? Yeah, sure. Um, we are not separated. We are like a Nordic area together. There's a lot of collaboration. There are Nordic companies uh, which work like a borderless. Uh, we help each other with, with Nordvolt. We are very active in, 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 in Norway as well. So, uh, as I said, the European market, I, I meant also including Nordics. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mari, uh, where do you see electrification holding the greatest promise in the future? On a, in a sort of big scale, on a wider scale? Well, I think, of, of course, local uh, impacts like with the smoke, like in, in highly populated areas, it, it will be very important. But then on the other hand, in less populated areas, it, it is uh, also very important that where the electricity comes from, that that is also low CO2 uh, produced energy. So it's a whole, it's not like er electrified car alone. It's the whole mm. system that need to be sustainable and we need to pay focus on that, that we pay su uh, or, or b we build sustainable, sustainable entire, entirety from cars, from raw materials, energy production, uh, recycling, yeah. each part. Absolutely. Um, how about uh, Ilka, would you like to add to that? Where do you see uh, elect uh, electrification holding the greatest promise for the future? Well, I, I think I agree with uh, Mari that it's, it's the systemic uh, transformation mm. what's going on. And uh, we, must, we must understand that and everybody understand, I guess, uh, that we are looking for, let's say, low carbon future. That's, that's the behind of everything. And that, that has started a huge transformation towards electrification. Uh, it, it's EV cars, it's uh, reno renewable energy, there's a lot of things, but it's like a whole systemic change what's going on. Um, we've already kind of touched upon this. We've talked about how Finland is not doing this alone, that we are collaborating on a European level, we're collaborating on a Nordic level. And also here in Finland, we, we need input and, and we need uh, talent and we need uh, investments, obviously. Um, Finland is said to be the number one in university industry collaboration in the world. Uh, Ilka, how does this show uh, in your view in practice? And maybe Mari, you could uh, respond to that as well. Well, I will give you a short answer. I think the best example is, is sitting right here. <laughs> we are talking about, talking about Bat Circle uh, ecosystem project where collaboration exists uh, between, let's say, industries and, and universities. So maybe it would be better if Mari could open that up. Yeah, so we have this, this Finland-based ecosystem where we have 23 companies, six research institutes, a couple of municipalities working together towards same goals of, of uh, improved, more sustainable operation in mining, refining, recycling, active material preparation, business models. Uh, so I think this is uh, something quite unique that we have such a uh, wide value chain, but also that we work very close and very, with very advanced research in, in, in universities. So in such a small country as Finland, we need to do research that has impact and, and or communicate very actively with the companies in the field. Absolutely. All right. Um, I think uh, at the moment we don't have any more questions from uh, from our journalists. So, so I will t uh, thank you, Maria and Ilka, for your time for now, you. and uh, and uh, you'll be uh, uh, letting everybody know that Maria and Ilka will be around uh, towards the end of the event as well to answer any any further questions that you might have. Um, at now, I think we should be ready for our poll. We have a little poll question for you so that we can get your thoughts on electrification as well. Do we have our poll up already? Excellent. All right. So the question is, um, where do you see the greatest benefits in electrification? And this is for you uh, following us online. Uh, we have a couple of options. There is A, reduction in pollution caused by traffic. B, reduction in pollution caused by industry. Uh, C, creating entirely new areas of application and solution for end users. And then D, others. And I'll uh, be sharing the results of the poll after I've uh, had a chat with our next guest, who is uh, Tur Stendal, the country manager for BASF here in Finland. I'll be talking with uh, him about how BSAF is supporting the sustainable European battery value chain uh, with a plant in Finland. 
BASF, of course, is the German multinational chemical company that focuses on cathode active materials which are needed in the battery production phase. But before we get into that, uh, let's first take a, a look at uh, BASF's video where they are introducing their new plant in Harjavalta in the western part of Finland. And once again, I'll remind you to please, uh, please type your questions into the chat for uh, uh, Tur Stendal from BASF. Let's watch the video. At BASF, we create chemistry for a sustainable future. Sustainability is in our DNA. Battery materials, in our case, cathode materials, are one of the biggest growth areas of the chemical market. Between 2020 and 2025, BASF will invest a significant amount of money in our battery material business. Our goal is to become a market-leading cam supplier with the best-in-class sustainability and CO2 footprint globally. BASF. We create chemistry. Tur, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you Thanks. doing? I'm doing fine. Thanks. <laughs> great to be here. Excellent. Great to have you. Um, so why did BSAF decide to invest in Finland in the first place? I think there are many reasons for that, why Finland came up as top on, on our selection of, of, of sites. First of all, of course, the availability of, of the important minerals for the value chain and both, both in the mining, but also for refining. And of course, having that here, we also have a very skilled labor base, which helps for us to investment, our investment to, to get the right people in place. Important, of course, from a sustainability point of view, is also uh, the, the availability of renewable energy, which is good here in Finland. So for instance, our planned plant will run on 100% renewable electricity. And then, of course, should not forget the, the support and willingness to, to, to take us to Finland that we got from, from both the ministry, from the local authorities, and also in good cooperation with, with Business Finland. Yeah, thank you. Um, what is uh, BASF's role in the battery value chain? Well, as also came, came through, for, through the video, BASF uh, for the battery value chain focus on the cathode mm -hmm. active materials. So we are situated between the metal refineries and the cell, uh, battery cell manufacturers. So we will produce in Harjavalta the precursor cathode active material that we are then shipping to our second investment, uh, which will, uh, are, or is, is being built in Schwarzheide in Germany, where we are then producing the cathode active material that will be shipped off to the customers. Excellent. Um, the, the plant in Harjavalta is new. Uh, when uh, will the new plant uh, actually start operating? Well, you saw in the video also nice, nice pictures, so you can see that actually construction is, is going really well. Even with considering the corona challenges, uh, we are now uh, have most of the buildings already from the outside ready. We are mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the process of recruiting people. It's also going very well right now. And the plan is to have the, the plant up and running next year. Excellent. How, how have you found uh, finding f uh, people to work at your plant? Uh, has, it, has it been easy to find the talent, talent in he here in Finland to come and work, work at the plant? Absolutely. We were, that was one of the, the, the questions marks we had when, when mm. we started this process, but, but we've been really, really positively surprised by, by the, the amount of people interested in the project and also the quality of the applicants for the project. Excellent, that's really good to hear. Uh, at this point, I'll remind you to uh, our, our journalists online to uh, uh, type in your questions into the chat and I'll, be, uh, I'll then uh, ask Tur uh, some of uh, your questions as well. Um, uh, can you maybe Tur, talk a little bit about uh, how you sustainably source your materials? Sure, absolutely. I mean, we are partnering up with, with mining companies and refineries regionally here to be able to build up the value chain locally so we can have a resilient and a sustainable and, and secure value chain for, for the European market. We're also, I mean, one, one way to get sustainable materials also via the recycling. 
So BSF is also investing a lot into developing recycling methodologies and technologies. Uh, so that, that comes on top also. And then maybe on a, on a broader scale, uh, BSF was one of the founding members of the Global Battery Alliance, uh, which is a forum where, of course, these topics are being discussed. Yeah. Can you maybe expand a little bit about that, uh, on what, you, what is your role in the forum? Well, as I said, BSF was one of the founding mm. members of that, and, and so we have been part of the discussion, for setting out the, the, the target for, for the, the alliance and, and what, what we are going to target. One good example is, is a battery passport. I think Mari talked about that, the traceability mm. of the battery. So a battery passport where you have all the information about the battery uh, available is, is a very important tool for the future. How, how is a battery uh, 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 passport implemented? We've been talking about the COVID passport now, now recently, but how is a battery uh, uh, passport I, done? Yeah, I, I think that, that is something that's now being discussed, how that right. can be, be done yeah. in, in the best and the most practical way. Okay, all right. That sounds exciting. Um, we have a question from Frédéric Faux. Uh, he's asking us, uh, in which way uh, is the Harjavalta factory unique or special for Europe? Thanks for the question. I think, first of all, this is the first major precursor factory being built in, in, in Europe. In that sense, it, it is al already unique, bringing this technology at this scale to, to, to Europe. And of course, also the CO2 footprint that we want to get out of the, the materials that we are going to produce uh, with the technology that we have with the, the, the renewable energy sourcing and, and our partnerships with the, the, on the raw material side brings a, a unique product to the market. All right. Uh, it looks like we don't have any questions and further questions now from our journalists. So uh, I think uh, at this point I will thank you, uh, Thor, for your time. And then uh, you'll be around as well towards the end of the, uh, end of the event uh, to, for any further questions that we might have. Uh, and I promised you now that I would have the results of our poll. Um, the results are quite evenly spread in terms of how our viewers today see uh, the greatest benefits being from electrification. Uh, there's 38% uh, are saying that uh, the biggest, uh, biggest benefit is creating entirely new areas of application and solutions for end users. Then we have 33% uh, saying uh, that reduction in pollution caused by traffic is, uh, is important. And then close to 30%, uh, 29% saying uh, the reduction in pollution caused by industry is an important benefit from electrification. All right, so those were our uh, poll results. Uh, and next we will be moving on to talk to our uh, second uh, company today, which is Finnish energy company Fortum. Uh, Fortum is reshaping the energy system, improving resource efficiency and providing smart solutions for the future. They are here today to talk about how they are revolutionizing the lithium ion battery value chain for electric uh, and industri industry use batteries. But before we get into our discussion, uh, let's first watch a video uh, about how Fortum is already recycling battery materials. This is a lithium ion battery. Today, only half of it can be recycled, leaving precious scarce metals behind. That won't cut it in the future. Luckily, there is a solution. This is the standard battery. Our solution captures plastics and metals, but also the scarce metals. The low emission process allows cobalt, lithium, manganese and nickel to be recovered. These raw materials are then delivered to manufacturers who reuse them in new batteries. This raises the recycling rate to over 80% and saves precious natural resources as well as reduces CO2 emissions from production by up to 90%. And best of all, recycling batteries drives change towards a cleaner world. And joining me now is Tero Holender, who is the head of business line batteries at Fortum. Welcome, Tero. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you very for much. joining us. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> So uh, a couple of questions for you as well. Um, where are you with your uh, recycling business today at Fortum? Well, it has been an interesting journey. We have been actually doing this now for several years. And, and uh, actually we are on the market. We are offering the service. We are operating the facilities. So, so we, are, we are 
on the field and on the market. Uh, we currently operate actually three different facilities in, in Finland alone. So uh, we have in North part, Tornio, we are separating uh, nickel, for example, from the metal industry residues for the battery material production. And then second facility that we have is in the middle part of Finland in Ikalien, which is receiving the end of life batteries from the market and doing the pre dismantling. And then we have our own new fresh novel mechanical plant at Ikalinen that then treats the uh, batteries and separates so-called black mass for our third facility located on west coast Finland, which is a kind of a industrial scale steel pilot plant, hydrometallurgical process that then treats the uh, and recovers the metals from the black mass that then can be then produced as a sulfates and, and guided to the, uh, to the uh, for example, battery industry use. And then we also have the, uh, the R&D and the laboratories located here in Finland to develop new technologies like the recent lithium uh, recovery that we just patented early this year. All right. Lot, uh, lots going on. Yes, And lots probably going on uh, in the future as well. What are some of your future plans? Yeah, plenty of plans, <laughs> many things to do. Uh, Fortum is actually already, we are providing variety of services for the industrial customers on the, on the battery value chain. So, so we can, as a company, offer already CO2-free energy for the, for the different manufacturers on the, on the battery value chain. And then in addition, uh, there are always some production wastes, uh, maybe some hazardous wastes coming from the mm. battery materials production. So Fortum can also treat those responsible way on, on our own facilities and that way serve the uh, investments uh, coming to Scandinavia and Finland. And then of course the battery recycling. So uh, what we are doing and what we have been working hard during past couple of months is the uh, a new larger scale hydrometallurgical recycling plant for same area in Harjavalta. And there we actually already in the autumn, we passed the environmental impact assessment program. And the, uh, now we have been working recent months uh, on the environmental permit to enable the actual construction of the new facility. And that way, of course, with the larger capacity, uh, able to offer uh, larger amount of customers and, and other markets as well. Excellent. And we have a question uh, now from Isabel Malsang. Uh, she's asking, uh, do you plan to operate outside Finland for recycling batteries? How many operators are there in Europe for recycling and what market share do you think you have in Europe? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Isabel. So actually we already offer, we have a receiving terminals outside Finland. So, so in all Scandinavian countries, we are also on the market uh, receiving the, uh, the related waste and the and the end-of-life batteries for our terminals. So the, uh, the auto market areas, uh, the work is ongoing. So our ambition is to be a significant player on the, uh, on the battery materials recycling field on, on European market. And uh, naturally, we are working towards the, uh, the important markets in, in, in the Europe yep. as well. Um. Uh, a more uh, general question maybe for you. Um, how do you see the battery industry landscape evolving in the future? Well, at least uh, from uh, our point of view, we can see it also in our own activities. So as we are an energy company, so uh, the use of the batteries is increasing very fast also in our industry. And of course, then the uh, uh, when the renewable energy production is increasing, uh, so will the need of the batteries on this field. And this, of course, means also that the need for the raw materials is increasing very strongly. And, and what we are happy about is, of course, that the European Commission has also recognized on rather early phase uh, the need for the regulation, how it can support also the development of use of these uh, sustainable raw materials and the material recycling. So a bit the same has happened with the plastics and the plastic recycling, how it evolved with the, uh, with the supporting uh, uh, regulation. So. What we see, at, uh, well, Finland, uh, as said earlier, definitely will be a hub and important place for production of the raw materials for the European battery industry. industry. And then uh, we having the uh, metal recycling uh, refining processes here close to the, the uh, industry itself, the battery production industry. Yep. So that way we think that we can, of course, help Finland to be more competitive 
on the international market, and then, well, naturally also, well, make uh, batteries maybe one more step more green. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, there is another question coming in um, uh, from, uh, from one of our journalists. What is better for the environment, uh, recycling lithium-ion batteries or a second life? Well, I think, the, of course, the primary uh, target should be to prolong the use of the, of the produced batteries as long as possible. So, so second life use definitely is an important and, and Fortum, we have been also doing cooperation with the, uh, with the uh, automotive companies. Most recently, there was the announcement with the Volvo cars, so that we are actually combining the uh, second life battery units with our uh, hydropower plants, for example, and that way prolonging the life of the, of the, uh, the batteries. So we are basically doing this uh, already and it's an important part and will be important part of the of the uh, story in the future as well but the uh, of course the recycling after the second mm -hmm. life uh, materials will be recycled but then hopefully also returned back to the battery industry use exactly yeah yeah, yeah. All right. It looks like we don't have any questions coming in right now from uh, from our viewing journalists. But uh, there, are, you of course will be around as well towards the end. So if you come up with new questions uh, through uh, through our session, then uh, you'll be able to ask those at the end. Um, so thank you, Tero, for now. Thank you. Uh, I'll see you again in a little while. Thank you. And now it's actually already time for our final company of today, uh, which is Sandvik, the global engineering group based here in Finland that is a leader in mining electrification. Uh, let's watch a video now to get a better idea of what that is about. We chose a loader as the, as the concept vehicle, uh, mostly because of the, uh, the high speeds. It goes fast, above 20 km per hour. Also loaders have to drive quite long distances. We replaced the existing drive lines with uh, battery electric drive lines. It's cabinless, it's fully electric, it's self-driving and uh, also self-planning. The future is uh, digitalized and electrified. This machine is both of those. So it's an uh, electrified autonomous machine, so that's the future for the mining. Now I'd like to welcome Dr. Jani Vilenius. You are the Director of Technology Development uh, and Services at Sandvik. Welcome. Thank you. How nice are you this here. morning? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Uh, so uh, Sandvik, uh, 
uh, so electrification is uh, one of the key solutions uh, in enabling mining companies and contractors around the world to have more sustainable operations in mineral mining. Um, in the video just now, we saw your fully electric auto mine concept vehicle. Um, what kind of role do these kinds of innovations have in the transition to electrification in the mining industry? Yeah, I think I want to highlight first that I hope this, this shows that uh, technology leadership, sustainability are the, are the really the things what we are talking about here. And uh, this unit is, is uh, next gen auto mine concept vehicle, as we call it. So we have already today the offering for the electrification solutions and uh, also for full autonomous operations. But this is the, the future where we really see the mining is going. So, so this is utilizing the latest technologies of, of digitalization path, like, for example, the AI technology. It's, uh, mm. And in electrification, we don't talk about only that it's a battery. We mm. see the whole equipment, how we, how we develop the new system, the auxiliary systems, how we make the equipment efficient, which means then, of course, the productivity to the customer. And then we talk about the charging, we talk about electric grid and the whole, whole package. Mm. And uh, we don't do these things alone. So this equipment also shows that uh, our partners, our ecosystem partners are really important for us. And uh, definitely we want to do this with our customers. So close cooperation with customers is really important in this case as well. I really think that this, uh, this, this uh, equipment uh, will provide new and interesting solutions in, in coming years. Excellent. Yeah, it, it certainly looks very cool. <laughs> it's, it's an incredible looking machine. Um, uh, as you mentioned, and as we, as we know, Sandvik has a, a, a very long track, uh, tack, uh, strong track record in electrification. Um, and you have uh, ambitious plans for a full range of elect uh, electrified underground offerings in the, in the near fu future. Uh, you also value the diversity of your employees' expertise. Uh, what kind of opportunities does this create for international talent in the industry? Yeah, so so as as we are going this kind of technology shift, uh, digitalization, electrification, we we want to have of course the high competence teams, and mm. and uh, I think it's nowadays it's a must to have the diversity teams. Diversity is really giving the value. We have we have noticed that uh, when you have this kind of themes where you have a multi multi uh, cultural uh, teams, you have a female, male balance right and, and age balance right. So it really gives the efficiency for the work. And of mm -hmm. course, this kind of new technologies that, that uh, we are not traditional machine maker. We can see that we are really the technology leader and we have really interesting things. We have a lot of nationalities, for example, mm -hmm. in Finland, working with these topics already today. Yeah, yeah, that's good to hear. Um, so far, no, uh, no questions yet from our journalists. Uh, once again, I encourage you to, to uh, type those in. Um, Jani, how do you see the mining uh, uh, industry electrification evolving in the future? Yeah, the, actually it's going pretty fast. So, mm. so I think uh, all, all, all our customers and us, we are talking about all the time with these two topics, which are the digitalization and electrification. They are supporting each other very well, so, so which means, of course, the sustainability. But uh, electrification, why, for example, in underground mining is so important is that you can get rid of the diesel emissions. Mm -hmm. And actually, the ventilation cost of the underground mine operation is so huge. It can be 50% of the whole mine, mine operation can be related to ventilation. So when we can reduce the ventilation need, so of course, it's cost saving, but it's also more sustainable for the, for the global point of view as well. And uh, I believe that in coming years we will see much more uh, electric, electric offering. We mm. are already today we have, for example, in underground drilling, we have full range of, of, of drill rigs which are electrified. We have loaders, we have trucks, but I think we will see much more in, in coming years. How, how widely globally are, uh, is your machinery already in use in mines? Yeah, we can say that it's, it's, it's fully global. So, mm. so there are certain countries which are driven by, by legislation. Mm. But then now when we can see that technology actually can give the productivity, it can give mm. you more reliability, it can give you more safety. So it's not anymore the legislation which drives this issue. We can see really the values and customers can see the, really the values of, the, of the utilizing these new green technologies. So we are talking about global 
globally related to electrification and digitalization. Yeah. And now we have actually a, a question for, uh, again from Michael uh, Reichenbach from ATZ magazine. Uh, how long can the mining vehicle work and drive before it has to be plugged in again? What is the uh, KWH capacity uh, of the battery? Excellent question. And, and uh, this is the concept vehicle. So, so this is not uh, fully packed with, with all the electric, electric energy what could be done. But we have different type of applications. So we have a underground drilling operations where we are drilling the holes and we are connecting to the grid. So we are, for example, charging while drilling and, and it doesn't mean to be fast. Then we have a, a bit different type of applications like loaders and trucks where you, your main purpose is to drive. There we have utilized this kind of battery swapping technologies mm. or, or fast charging. Today we are focusing more on battery swapping. It's, it's uh, more efficient. We can do the battery swapping in six minutes automatically. So it's so quite fast. fast. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's a combination of everything. So I'm not always saying that, of course, we try to put as much energy on board as possible. Mm. But it doesn't mean always that because we can optimize the whole process and give the productivity via that way. Yeah. Um, then there's a question from uh, uh, Isabel Malsang from uh, a AFP. Uh, when, in your opinion, will be the industrialization of your concept car? Are you working already with a car maker? Interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting question. Uh, I can say that this, this unit, uh, we are commercializing parts of that all the time, the subsystems. And, and end of the day, I think this kind of vehicle will be also, uh, also in the market. But uh, also I want to highlight for this question that we are working with automotive sector a lot, of course. But mm -hmm. we need to understand that what is our applications and what are the values. And we need to consider what we can apply. But I think especially the suppliers and partners in automotive sectors, the big players in global market, we are working with them as well. But of course, of course we have also the other smaller players. So we are really open for the, for the, for the partners who can create the value with us and, and, and change the world. Absolutely. All right. Um, thank you, Yanni, at this point. Uh, and please uh, join us for the wrap up in just a couple of seconds. Thanks. All right, we are now actually en uh, nearing the end of our live stream uh, this morning uh, here uh, on, on, on finish time. And it's uh, time for us to start wrapping up. Uh, all our guests uh, from today are still around so, uh, uh, and available for questions. So please go ahead and, and type in any of your questions into the chat and, and we'll uh, incorporate those into our, our discussion. Ilka has uh, joined me again here on stage. Um, Ilka, what were some of your key takeaways from the discussion that we've had today? Well, I'm going to pick up only a few. Uh, I hope you got the message that there's a lot of uh, cool things happening in Finland in terms of uh, battery business. So Finland is a hotspot in Europe, hotspot in uh, globally. So uh, please take a clo closer look on us. Uh, we only saw a few highlights today. Those are one of the one of the best ones, but there's plenty more. We are hundred and plus companies, uh, stakeholders working together towards sustainable future, and we we are open for collaboration internationally. We are looking for investments. We are looking for commercial partnerships. We are looking for let's say core research type of top topics. So uh, I think this is, this gives you a a good uh, head start to uh, learn more about Finnish competencies in battery business. All right. Yeah, it, this, was a, this was an introduction, so uh, ple please keep those uh, questions coming. And now be, maybe I'll turn, uh, turn over to our guests. Um, I, have a, I have a question for you, uh, Tero, because I know that uh, you came out with an exciting press release today uh, from the Fortum side. Could you maybe tell us what that was about? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, indeed, today we came out with the, uh, with the press release regarding the a new transfer permits for the end-of-life batteries and battery waste from the from the different countries to our process in Finland. Yes, the uh, well, uh, as we all know, I mean, uh, you cannot produce a battery without uh, some maybe some production wastes arising. So, so uh, some of those wastes are considered as as a hazardous materials, and then uh, then of course 
the uh, the legislation is is accordingly and they should be treated and transported accordingly so what we also see important is that the uh, when moving these materials from country to country and also when we are importing these materials to our processes recycling processes in finland so that the uh, the uh, right permits are on place and the transportation is done according to the uh, existing legislation Excellent. Thank you, Taro. Um, and there, there is a question from uh, uh, Vincent Le Bugle from uh, Tolerie magazine. Um, to what extent, uh, uh, and this one's for you, Ilka, uh, to what extent are uh, developments in hydrogen technology likely to overshadow the battery market? At what horizon do you estimate the switch between the two, two technologies? So looking even beyond batteries now. Yeah, well, that, that, that is a big question. Uh, mm. uh, and I, I, I can also say that they co go kind of hand in hand. Mm. Uh, hybridization in Europe is, is a hot topic, uh, but so are the batteries. And after all, they they can be combined, and different applications or different end uses uh, can utilize different technologies. So uh, I would say that they don't, let's say, shadow each other. They mm. kind of uh, work together. Yeah, rather complement each other. Yeah, yes. exactly. Um, Tero, there's a question for you from uh, Christine Lery from a uh, Profession Recycleur from France. Uh, Fortum wants to increase the recycling rate of batteries to 80% from 50%. Can you tell me on which materials the efforts of recycling will be made? Uh, what materials will not be recycled and why aren't you uh, targeting 100%? Is it maybe a question of profitability? <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. indeed. Uh, I would say so that the, uh, uh, one needs to be realistic. Of course, the, uh, the highest possible recovery rate and uh, highest possible recycling rate should be always the target, but the uh, uh, there are limits what you can reach with the with the processes also and the profitability of course comes on play as well but the, the materials uh, that we see maybe the most uh, challenging or let's say what they what needs to de be developed further are the definitely the graphite for example and its use uh, maybe not on the battery applications necessary but uh, but maybe on some other applications uh, graphite has a big share of the weight of the battery as well and then, of course, there are different kind of, uh, let's say, chemicals like electrolytes or, or, the, or the different glue materials. And, and uh, uh, there, are, there is development, of course, on the producer side. And we, we discuss uh, with the producers of those materials how the recycling of those could be made better and how they could be utilized, not maybe if not in the battery use, maybe on some other uses at least. Mari, I see that you're making notes. Uh, is there anything that you would like to comment on what uh, that was saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, we always come into the situation that when we want to recycle everything, we mm. would ne will need to put in a lot of energy and chemicals. And there is a sweet spot that will make uh, recycling more uh, 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 less competitive to environment compared mm. to the uh, uh, primary production. But their innovations are in a key role. So they actually research groups, universities, research organizations can make innovations to make more of recovery, more profitable for environment and, and also economics. Yeah. Good point. Uh, Tur, there's a question for you from our friend Michael uh, from ATZ. Um, will the production uh, capacities in Harjavalta and uh, Schwarzheide uh, be the same? What figures are available on this? Thanks for the question. Uh, I mean, the idea for us is really to, to be part of this cathode active material value chain. So, so we are mirroring the production capacities in Harjavalta with the investment in, in Schwarzheide. And, and now in the first step of, of investments, we are targeting material that would be enough for around 400,000 fully electrical vehicles per year. But we are also planning this for the future. So with modular uh, technology, we can increase capacity as the demand is, is going on the sites that we have. Yeah. Uh, and a question now for uh, Mari uh, from, uh, from Frédéric uh, Faux from Le Figaro. Um, what is the position of Finland right now uh, in this market of recycling batteries? Uh, would, it, uh, would, it been, uh, would be great to have uh, s uh, some kind of market study. Is one available? <laughs> I, I, I would like to note, thank you for the, for the very nice question, that, that batteries have quite a long lifetime and most of them are just being installed. So actually, when we talk about you know, market shares 
and, and uh, big amounts of recycled raw materials, that will come only in, in 10 years into our hands. So basically, market is at the moment demonstrating different kind of technologies around uh, Europe in different locations, uh, getting uh, locally raw material that and developing technology. So now is the time actually for technology development, for improving of, of recoveries and decrease of, of CO2 footprint of the processing and market of course, negotiations, agreements are going at this time, but the big amounts where we truly have big raw material amounts, they are just coming later. Yeah. So we don't kind of market situation at this moment does not tell anything about the market situation in, in five years. Yeah. Uh, Tero, you had a comment. Well, maybe I would like to build on, on Mari's good comments. So, so uh, it's also good to uh, note that the um, Today, uh, it's not only about the recycling of the end-of-life batteries. So, so uh, we also work hard on the recovering these needed target metals from the other residues, like from the, uh, let's say, steel industry uh, waste streams or, or metal refining or mining, mining and refining waste streams. And, and naturally also, I mean, the battery production itself, cell production, uh, like BASF building also the, uh, the precursory material production. So, those industries also uh, have some losses in the process and, and the recovery of those materials back to the use of the battery value chain is very important and those materials will kind of bridge maybe the, uh, the demand before the actual end of life units from the uh, consumer use come back. Yeah, this, this pre-production scrap is, is very key issues at this moment. Uh, maybe one thing I would like to also note is that when we talk about metals, so like we have residues, we have solar cells, we have uh, catalyzing surfaces, we have batteries. So, so many of renewable technology options, energy storage options, they are all metal intensive. So it's not only about exact this battery chemistry of lithium, but it's a lot of battery chemistries, a lot of other energy products that are being developed, uh, which need metals and need metals recycling. Um, here, uh, th there's a question now from uh, from uh, Isabel from uh, AFP again. Um, maybe this is for the panel panel widely. Maybe Yanni, you you haven't had a chance to speak yet, so maybe if you want to be the first to comment, how do you see Europe position uh, on a global battery market? Will Europe be autonomous in this field? Yeah, I think maybe there is even better 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 people to give the right <laughs> answer but i would say that that how i see as OE and point of view as a, a sun of week we see that we utilize the 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 battery battery suppliers and battery partners so so i think it's still quite global the the market and but in europe we have a we have a good good opportunity to be more sustainable i would say and and that's the strong thing but i i still believe that it's uh, we need to work together heavily in, in Europe. That's the key to be successful. But it's also mean that we need to work hardly also with other players. So, so it's I, I wouldn't say that it's just a Europe or, 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 or Asia or something else. I see that it's, this is a global thing. Thor, would you like to comment? Yeah, I, I mean, Same I think <laughs> the, the, there is a clear commitment and wish from the, the European Commission to build up a, a European value chain, sustainable competitive value chain for the batteries. And, and of course, that is something that we are all participating in, in doing. Uh, I mean, and I think you can see, especially on the cell manufacturing, a lot of these gigafactories have been announced and are being planned to be built in, in, in Europe. But maybe if you go upstream, you will see that, that, I mean, there we are maybe not at that tempo yet. Mm -hmm. But of course, being able to utilize the, the, the regional raw materials in Europe will be extremely important here. And that's one of the strengths of Europe also to do that. Yeah. Mari, some comments from you to AFP's question, Isabel's question? Yeah, I, I would say this all starts like somebody asked earlier, if win Finland, why Finland alone? Absolutely not Finland alone. Why Scandinavia alone? Absolutely not Scandinavia alone. Why Europe alone? Not Europe alone. I think mm. the global challenges, uh, global like uh, the environmental challenges that we are facing, they are global. So we need to. It's extremely important to evaluate all the time, recycling processes, mining processes, the environmental impact, also raw material criticality that we bring early on in the development of new batteries, new energy storage options, new recycling processes. We evaluate critically 
the environmental friendliness and share that knowledge so that actually mm. this globe can benefit and, and, and that we can build sustainable living on this globe for further. So absolutely not to Europe alone, but, but we have all our competitive edge and what Finland wants to bring I, I, in and or uh, highlight is truly sustainable production and CO2 low production. I think those are probably good words to end on, unless, Ilka, you have something you would like to say to, uh, to, uh, to respond to Isabel's question still? Or? Well, I could uh, actually add a few, few points. Uh, Go ahead. First of all, uh, everybody has, has now uh, seen that Europe is a hotspot. Mm. There's a lot of investments happening, a lot of development happening. Uh, on the other hand, some people are saying that the uh, battery value chains are kind of threefold, one being in Europe, second one being in Americas and third one in Asia. But it should not mean that we do not collaborate with mm. the best practices, research topics, uh, technology transfer, etc. So nobody really knows what the future will be, but I guess in, in order to, uh, let's say, avoid, uh, let's say, materials going back and forth long distances, kind mm. of geographic approach could be, could be feasible in the future. All right. Thank you, Ilka. And uh, I, looking at the time, this is uh, uh, what we've had, uh, what we had time for today. I would like to uh, already uh, thank all our experts in the studio for for your time and for your excellent uh, responses. Um, now, before we uh, before we uh, finish for the day. Um, this uh, day would not have been, and this event would not have been possible if it weren't for my super colleagues, Mia and Mary. I'd like to invite them to join us here. <laughs> and they've done a huge amount of work, so I think they deserve a round of applause. <laughs> uh, and of course, I want to uh, thank Latamo as well, who has been our partner for this event. Um, and now, just a couple of practicalities uh, before we close off. So the, the content information of the companies and the organizations that we've been speaking with today are in the chat. And uh, there's more information uh, about, uh, about all the companies, uh, their press materials, their photos, everything is available in the press, uh, press kit, which is in the Business Finland Media Bank. And you have a link to that in the chat, and we'll share that with you later as well. And of course, uh, uh, Mary and me and myself, we can all be contacted for any, with any follow-up questions that you might have or interview requests as well. And as always, we'd be very appreciative of your feedback. The link to the feedback form is also in the chat, so please respond to that. And we'll also be sharing that with you uh, by email. But now, one final thank you to everybody in the studio. One final thank you to all of you who joined us online. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day.